ladies and gentlemen, I want to just take out this particular time to introduce the next session for you. Um, apparently, this was the session I hosted last year, no, moderated last year, and somebody else is going to take it up for us today. We are going to be talking about fostering inclusivity, encouraging women's engagement in the Bitcoin ecosystem. We're about to raise the Amazons. But since we don't have a song for Amazons, DJ is going to play one particular one. And as DJ plays the song, I want the following people to please come up on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Meron. Please put your hands together for Lorraine. Please put your hands together for Mills Mills. And then Tochi on your DJ. Take over. So can you please tell me who you are and what you do and um, what interesting thing can tell us? Oh, okay. uh, hello, everybody. So my name is Tochi, uh, Tochi Onya. I am a Bitcoin educator and um, uh, I would say a community IT support and community manager. So um, for Bitcoin education, I basically love to you know, educate young Nigerians. In fact, Nigerians basically about Bitcoin and the potentials of Bitcoin um, in Nigeria and in Africa. And I do this through um, hosting workshops, trainings, meetups, and even street campaigns. And uh, currently I work for um, No Ones. No one's is a Bitcoin messenger and a P2P marketplace where you can easily buy um, and sell the Bitcoin, you know, P2P. And, you know, no one's is designed for, you know, especially for um, people in the global south. Yeah, that's it. Hi, I'm Mills. I've been working in Bitcoin for the past few years. I was at Bitcoin Magazine building out their original content department and then head of communications. And I'm currently at PubKey, where I am their director of content and partnerships. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Marcel Lorraine. I am the founder of Bitcoin Dada. Um, uh, just to slide this in. So last year, I came here with the help of the Bitcoin community. So thanks to Anita Posh who initiated that. This year I come in at my own individual capacity and not only do I come by myself, I have some of the ladies from the Bitcoin Dada team uh, with me here to, to well, I almost said tonight. <laughs> so um, Bitcoin Dada, please just say hi because I'm really proud of you. Um, yeah, so for me that is as an educator, as a Bitcoin educator, that for me is proof of work, what we are doing to actually empower um, Africans, African females. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'll start with you. How can the Bitcoin community actively foster a more inclusive environment to encourage greater participation from women considering the current gender gap into the ecosystem? Toshi? Uh, I can get that. Take the case, okay. How can the Bitcoin community actively foster a more inclusive environment to encourage greater participation for women, considering the current gender gap in ecosystem? Um, thank you. So um, I think first thing first, I would say that um, we, we don't have an atmosphere that is not encouraging. I would say that um, you know, the, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ecosystem and the Bitcoin community, I would say the global Bitcoin community is one that is very supportive. You know, it's like one big family. So it's not something that, oh, you know, you know it's not, there's no form of discrimination of any sort in the Bitcoin um, ecosystem. So it's just like, um, you know, one big family, one big, just like one big um, global family. So to start with, I would say that um, the Bitcoin ecosystem has that supportive um, atmosphere. We have that supportive atmosphere. We have that supportive, um, um, you know, ecosystem that would encourage anybody, literally, that would encourage women, young women, um, in fact, irrespective of who you, um, your age, um, your locality, where you are, we have the atmosphere and um, the, you know, the ecosystem that supports um, women and encourages women to participate. Um, however, I would say that, um, in order to encourage more women to you know, actively um, participate in um, the Bitcoin ecosystem and to take up space um, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, I would say that um, 
at this point, we need more women um, to, um, to tell their stories. I would say storytelling. So yesterday when um, Mr. Femi was talking, he mentioned something about storytelling, and I was like, oh my God, did he see my notes? <laughs> yeah, so um, I think storytelling is really important. I think it's a very important factor that would encourage and inspire other women, other young ladies in the space to get inspired and want to actively participate and take up space. Because, um, you know, storytelling, you know, it, it gives people, it shows people, uh, it shows women what is possible. So um, if more women um, in this space are putting out their work, showing their work to, to, you know, putting out their work, putting out what they do, it makes other women who are indifferent about Bitcoin, um, indifferent about the Bitcoin ecosystem, to see what is possible, to see what other women are doing, and also get inspired um, and encouraged to get into the, um, to the ecosystem. <clears throat> this question is for Lorraine. Um, can you share some examples of successful initiatives or programs that have encouraged women to participate actively in the Bitcoin community? Of course, I'll definitely start with my own initiative, which is Bitcoin Dada. So for those who don't know what Bitcoin Dada, essentially what we do is to um, try and empower the African female through financial education, and we use, uh, we actually leverage on Bitcoin to do that. So I would say like for really a specific examples is how after our sessions or how after our programs, we get to see the changes before and after our program. So I, really, I just gave an example of having three females join me this year. Um, we now have what we call the mentorship program because I feel as educators, what we lack is filling in the gap between the education and then what happens next. And I think this is what Femi was trying to say, like education might not be necessarily that important because most educators have like a gap. So you have taught this person how to open a Bitcoin wallet, then what next? Do they end up doing something with it? So what we are doing at Bitcoin that is actually, uh, we have created a mentorship program where after learning about Bitcoin, they sharpen their skills and get to actually start contributing in the space. They can be absorbed in the space. So a very good example of that, um, one of the beneficiaries is Sharon and she got absorbed by Bitrust. Uh, so she's working for Bitrust. For me, that is an impact. We have um, our social media content creator who is Sabina and also, um, we also have Cecilia who got accepted by the Afro uh, Beacon Fellowship Program. So those are some of the stories that, I mean, some of the impactful stories that can share about how uh, specifically tailored programs that help women to actually empower themselves through Bitcoin. Uh, Mills, what are the, the barriers or challenges that women commonly face when trying to engage in Bitcoin ecosystem, and how can these obstacles be systematically addressed to create a more inclusive space? Yeah, I mean, I think there is, much as you said, the, the Bitcoin ecosystem is very friendly. It's very open, but a lot of the education material and more of the interest has been traditionally more male and masculine. And so I think there's a different way to explain things that just, our brains work differently than men's brains and we find different things interesting. So it's not as much that maybe that we need more women, it's that maybe the women here by sharing their stories or being involved in more projects with other women can find the, the vantage point that really excites them, that makes sense to them. I've heard so many stories from women that Bitcoin changed their life and made something possible for them. And just, I think, the nature, the incentive model of Twitter and, you know, a lot of the more aggressive ways of sharing content in this day and age is just a little bit more in the masculine frame. I think for, for women to be able to share their stories with each other, but also, I would like to say, I mean, Farida has done an incredible job to invite women to speak. And I feel like there's such a, a great leadership that she's demonstrated even in the curation of the speakers at this conference, because it's not as it's not as natural for women to go out to say, can I speak at your conference? That's not just an, as normal and regular as for a man to do that. And I think there are, has been such a movement for this inclusivity, and I think we're on a really great, exciting track. But I do think the more material 
content education that can be made by women, with women, or with women in mind. I, I've talked a lot to product developers that the more they can have a woman's point of view early on, they save themselves so much time later on because you know maybe the UI and UX make sense on a man's brain, but maybe there's this whole other part. And I think it's the beauty of, of really men and women working together. And I, I've been very thankful. I've always worked in male-dominated industries, but the Bitcoin industry is so, it's so welcoming. And it's so, if you want to know about something and you ask, there are people that would love to tell you. And it's, it's so warm. I'm so thankful. Can I, can I say something about that as well? Um, so, I sort of have like a different view on that considering that I work with women. So when you say it like that, it means women, uh, so like our brains cannot process stuff. So I don't say it that way, right? So for me, it's more of um, helping the females unlearn the societal norms that we have like that one. Uh, help them understand that we are socialized from childhood and especially uh, black females, Africans to be specific. We are socialized to understand that the tech space, anything financial, is not for females but for men. So by the time that these ladies are coming up to age, it's not that they cannot understand tech stuff. It's because they, in their mind already, they, they understand like, this is not for me, this is only male related, so I cannot get this. But when you help them and learn that, that you are an individual, not male or female, you're human, right? The same way um, a male, your male partner can understand this the same way you can. You just need to open your mind and learn what you have been taught and then be able to absorb the new information. Now, not to dismiss her point, um, everybody, every individual has something that they're actually attracted to or can really absorb really fast. So you just need to see, like, are you inclined to the tech space? For example, we have devs in Bitcoin Dada community. Then I just need to, uh, to unlearn that I can also um, that I cannot contribute as much as the guys from the Bitrust you know, community. So once they do that, we do that for them, or once we help as females in the Bitcoin space, you'll be able to see more participation, whether it's on the tech side, whether it's in the creative arts, education, and all that. Just help them and, and learn that uh, just because you're female, you cannot be able to participate because you know, your brain sort of works on some other level. I think, I think females, um, I think females are actually the smartest beings, let me just say Yes, that. we are. And if if, if I can respond, uh, it, when I say our brains work differently, I'm not saying women can't understand. It's more the, the way our brains work, I think, is different. And I think there's a natural interest in different categories, and it's the vantage point. It's the perspective. And yeah, to your point, there, there's, a lot more, uh, there's a lot more men in like tech but that maybe they think it's more possible, but maybe they're just more curious about it or interested than women are. Not that women can't be or don't understand the technology at all. So just to make sure you didn't no, understand. No, it's, it's fine. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so just to um, um, you know, continue from Marcel Lorenz, um, what she was talking about, uh, it just made me remember something that I encountered sometime this year, early this year when we had um, the cash crunch with NERA, this NERA scarcity and all of that stuff. So it was basically difficult to get NERA. It was, NERA became really scarce. And so um, just one morning, I, w I stepped out of my house to go get something by just near, nearby the house, nearby my house. And um, I didn't have cash, obviously, so I wanted to pay for what I was buying. And uh, I asked for her bank account to see if I would transfer money to her, right? And she said that, oh, she doesn't have a bank account. Uh, unless she would give me her husband's bank account, but I'd have to wait so that she would call her husband to confirm the payment. And um, I didn't have the time to wait for all of that. So I moved on to the next store, who was you know, a woman as well. And so um, I saw that she had a POS where you can use your debit card to pay for whatever it is you're buying. And um, I started conversing with this woman, and then I realized that um, before, before that day, she didn't have POS that she was using to receive, to receive payments from people who come to buy in her store. But as of that day, she already had POS. And I was I, I still conversing with her to get to know how she got it and how she was able to learn how to use um, POS. And um, 
Surprisingly, she said that, oh, I just went to the bank and they gave me the POS and then I turned this on and I pressed here and did this and did that and it started working, right? And so I, I got to see that um, she had a problem and she wanted to solve that problem, right? And so she went out looking for a solution and she found the solution and the solution that she found was so simple that she didn't need any sort of education or, or, expla or lengthy explanation. She didn't have to go read an article or read a book or something. She just turned it on and it was easy for her to understand. So I, I, I think that a lot of women um, sort of have this idea that, um, you know, Bitcoin or the Bitcoin ecosystem sort of is sort of like for the men because, you know, obviously it's male dominated. So they have like this sort of indifference or uninterested, um, you know, attitude that, uh, you know, Bitcoin is probably for the men and all of that stuff. And, you know, I think we also need to come to a point where while we are orange peeling these women, um, we need to orange peel them with solutions that are really, really simple that they can, you know, understand. Because at the end of the day, some of these women don't have internet, they don't have smartphones to be able to download some of, some of the applications that we have. So what then is the solution? Um, thanks to Machankura, you know, you don't need internet, you don't need a smartphone to be able to. So we need um, solutions as simple as this, you know, to be able to orange peel as many women to get them interested in, um, in the Bitcoin ecosystem generally. We'll get back to that. <clears throat> uh, Lorraine, what educational efforts or resources are available to help women learn about Bitcoin or blockchain technology? Sorry? What educational resources out, are out there to help women okay, learn so about Bitcoin? Okay. okay, so let me just circle back to what um, Toshi has said uh, on um, products, right? Having products that actually um, we as not even just females, but individuals and as the market can actually relate. I feel that is something that um, we builders, you know, the engineers, the tech guys, we, we need to like seek for uh, feedback from everybody and especially for females. And I'm saying for females because if you look at the African setup, it is us, the females, who actually make the most transactions, right? We're the most consumers. When you walk on the streets of Ghana, since we are all here, you'd see the females on the streets are the ones who are running their businesses, the small businesses. It's us in the houses who are buying, you're doing the shopping, you're paying the fees and all that. So I feel when, um, builders actually trying to build something, they should get feedback from the communities. And the communities is us women, right? So I think that is the point that Tochi was trying to make uh, in terms of having, having products that we as African females can relate or just females. I'm sorry, keep on saying African females because I, I, I work with African females a, lo a, a lot. So onto your question, you're asking about the, to the resources that are out there, right? So there are a lot of resources online um, that help teach or train uh, people on, on Bitcoin and blockchain technology. However, I would say this, back to the point of having information that's relatable, and not just to African females or to females as a whole, but to everybody. I feel the biggest uh, challenge that we have as Bitcoin community is that the information out there is too technical. And this is not just to, uh, to females, it is for everybody. Like it really, doesn't, it really doesn't make sense if I am trying to orange peel, right? Quote unquote, orange peel an individual and I'm talking to them about, you know, segwit and all that types of nonsense. This is somebody who has a problem and wants a specific solution to it, right? Um, so we need to start coming up with programs. We need to start coming up with educational materials that each and every person can, can relate to. So again, we have a lot of podcasts that can teach and train people on Bitcoin, blockchain technology, YouTube, all these books and all these books and resources. Most of them are available and are free online. But um, the specific type, tailored ones um, for females, uh, the best I would say is get like a mentor, right? Get like a mentor in this space. And one thing I learned is in my own journey, you really don't have to have like a direct connection to this particular person. For example, if I admire what Meron does, I can just simply follow her, right? Follow her, see what she's been doing, learn from that because each and every Bitcoin, especially in this space, we normally share what we're doing. So you can actually learn from the experience of other people without even having that specific uh, 
contact or direct contact to that person. You know, you can reach out to them, and I would say, as Africa, as as females, we need to be more welcoming to other females. We need to be more to start celebrating each and every other person or each and every other female in the space. We have that on uh, Bitcoin Dada. We have what we call her Bitcoin Story series, where we showcase. Um, the journeys of other female Bitcoiners. Um, so we've had Farida, we've had from students to actually females who've really, really created an impact on this particular platform. So I feel highlighting as well really helps like mentorship for females who are just coming up or females who want to actually start contributing or learn about Bitcoin. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, last question, Miles. Have you seen any evidence of the economic and social benefits of a more diverse Bitcoin community? Can you share some examples? I think, I think uh, in any community, just the more diversity, the more sharing of ideas, the more obvious benefit there will always be. And I, I would say within even the new apps being developed, the new products, the new projects, the new initiatives, I think there is a, a, a broadening and, and hopefully there will be just even more that's being created. And, and I don't know, I don't have a succinct specific answer to, to give to this question. So I don't wanna to just wander. What role can established female leaders in the Bitcoin space play? in uh, inspiring or guiding other women to get involved? Um, yeah, so I would say two things. Um, number one, mentorship. I think mentorship is very crucial, very important. Um, this just reminds me of something I was doing from last year. Um, every Thursday by 2 p.m., it's on my calendar if you check, every Thursday at 2 p.m. I have a mentorship, a mentorship sh um, session with at least one female. It is something that I do from last year, every Thursday um, from last year down to now. And this is because I, I believe that mentorship is a very important factor to encourage more women to come into this space because just like Lauren said, you can't just teach them about wallets, teach them about Bitcoin and then leave them out there, there has to be an end goal, and uh, mentorship is what helps these people, you know, continue to grow in the ecosystem until they no longer um, need your mentorship, until they can fully stand on their feet and um, take up space, basically, in the ecosystem. And uh, secondly, like I mentioned earlier, storytelling, um, it is really important that we as females in this space continue to share our stories and put out the work that we are doing in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Of course, I'm also talking to myself because, you know, you know I, I, I feel like, you know, there's a whole lot of things that, you know, um, women in the ecosystem are doing that needs to be out there so that more women who are indifferent about it can see pictures, can see what is possible, basically, and get interested and encouraged to get onto the space. So two things, mentorship and storytelling. Thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we had. Please give them a round of applause.